Welcome to the Texas Goat Radio Show. I'm your host, Vittorious. This is part one of the 1738 live stream from Owen, I Swear I Am Not Gay Benjamin, or I've Never Kissed a Guy Benjamin, or I Love That Steven Crowder Was My Alpha Benjamin. <laughs> Pick one. Now, this is a this is going to be an interesting one, I think, just because Stanley Kubrick, the director of the movie Lolita, which somebody so graciously pointed out to me in the comments section. I had no idea that he uh, directed the movie Lolita. If you don't know what Lolita is, it was the inspiration behind the private jet for Jeffrey Epstein's Lolita Express. So that should should give you some idea. Live. Hi. Hi. Let's <laughs> let me double check and make sure we're live. We're on our Telegram chat. Okay. Is the stream on? Kyneton just says it's live. Hi, everybody. We're here with the great Vivian Kubrick. We're going to talk. She did a she did a gab that I loved. Look how happy Owen is. This is the closest to Hollywood he has been in a long time, I think. If he's been closer, let me know. I, I don't know, really know who all he has uh, talked to openly, but I think this is the closest he's been to Hollywood in a very long time about the, the video I made about how sodomy takes down civilizations. And I thought that your take on it was really good about the, com the compassionate side to it as well. Because I, I, I just think a lot of people go one way or the other. They either want to like imprison and punish and, and just go crazy against people or like unlimited quote unquote compassion and hyper normalization, which destroys society. And I'll read what you wrote here in a bit, but I just, the way you described it, I thought there was real heart in it uh, and honesty. And our mutual friend was like, yeah. And, she, and uh, you know, she got some backla uh, backlash for that. And the fact that you publicly stated that, I just thought it was so cool. And I really wanted to talk to you on this live stream and I'm, I'm glad you're doing it. Well, I'm glad I'm here. I, I have to say, sorry, that's my cat in the background, if you can hear that. Um, I... I so value people that are willing to be truthful. I'm not in love with sort of smacking people in the face with, you know, the truth. Or that's that's rich. <laughs> she's she's talking to Owen, and I believe that she's talking to him about himself. Whenever she said, "I value people who are truthful." Oh man. More truth, like you know, if you don't, you know, it's <laughs> like. I, that, that's never <laughs> that stupid little laugh because that's what she she just said that she didn't like that ever going to work because I get hurt when people do that to me yeah yeah totally. you know, I, I, and I shut down and I just want to get away I actually heard uh, Robert Kennedy talking yesterday on a um, why is my kettle the loudest it's ever been in the history of a boiling I can hear it in my head I'm so sorry no I love it I love it um, anyway um he's having to force look at that he him forcing himself to smile and laugh. Didn't she just say, mention Robert Kennedy, and now he's going to have to just eat that up because he's not going to uh, confront her about it? Okay, I have to shut it off. It's, it's like putting me off. Hang on. No, go for it. The funniest thing is I've been, I've been watching a ton of Sherlock Holmes, so I'm like super into uh, British like I really like the British accent and and tea. Like I've been I've been watching nonstop Sherlock Holmes, and so this this vibe has been it's just been really magical for me. Like I, I had my wife make me tea. I was like, can we have some tea? Because I love British uh, mysteries. And so this is. <laughs> well, is there another word besides cringe? Because I don't like using the word cringe. But this is this is. I've actually started because usually I drink coffee because I'm a very uh, red-blooded American. And so I've been drinking a lot of tea recently. So this is actually uh, synch synchronizing quite well with my recent experiences. Well, I'll whip out my violin and my own in a second. I love it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, yeah, for people who know the real Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> anyway, uh, now I'm going to get a frog in my throat. Okay, is, I'm just going to have to calm down. All right, so where was I? Um, yeah, so I just think that RFK said something really brilliant yesterday. Um where he was saying that his uh, intention is to create dialogue. To not she has no idea that he hates that dude, that he, that he hates that dude. Not be rude, to not be threatening, but to really, really speak and communicate. And, of course, the globalists have made it their job to make that almost impossible. You know, they just want to create division, upset, people hurling abuse at each other, and it's like, stop! That's not how... 
we're going to move forward and that's how we mustn't move forward. So I am always very polite to people from the moment. Actually, I've got so much to say. I should let you. No, I'm really resonating say. with this and because I can be very aggressive and very in your face, yes. but that's, but that's, yes. as a, but as a comedian, like I, I used to tell other truthers, I'm like, I had a phrase called woke raping where I'm like, if you're just screaming right. at people horror, they're not going to, they're. Sorry. Woke, Sorry, you said woke? Woke raping. Rape. Yeah. Oh, oh, right. Where it's like you have to have consent. So it's like if somebody's just screaming at you horror and demonizing and all that stuff, uh, it doesn't actually work because you end up just not liking that person. So you almost define yourself against what they're saying. I'm in a weird position because comedians are very, you know, I used to be a heckler at a Renaissance festival. We have, <laughs> I mean... We have to, we have to, uh, no. All right. Well, you know, where people were throwing tomatoes at my face <laughs> and my whole job was to find their weakness, find their pressure point and insult them. And so I've had to balance that out because I see exactly what you're saying. And I've actually had, especially in the last few months, even real compassion. Like I, I've, I've been bridging more, uh, you know, I've started talking to my dad again. Uh, and he's like a very liberal college professor and everything. And and I've just been trying to find, I, I've just been seeing more compassion for like how this works. Like I did a video, I don't know if you saw, I tweeted it called How They Rule You, where it seems like both sides, not even, there aren't even sides, it's almost like these fabricated sides. They create these absurd caricatures. That I think for the most part that it is fa fabricated sides. Because if you, if you exist in the world, in a working environment, in society, I've rarely ever which i've well no i worked in houston so that's not necessarily true um even there the, for the most part everybody just got along with everybody make you hate it like it makes the other side like Greta thunder thunder whatever it makes you be, somebody, yeah. yeah it makes you be like i hate environmentalism because that person sucks you know, I'm not going to be talked down to by a 12 year old girl from Sweden or whatever, like, fuck you. And then you <laughs> shut off to like actual problems that the environment faces. And I think the same thing happens with um, some of the Q stuff where like there really is human sex trafficking and all this stuff. And there's a lot of stuff happening in Hollywood. But yet they, they take it to such a degree and they're so aggressively dark about it that you're like, you guys. Are what do you mean so aggressively? What does he mean by that? How can you present human sex trafficking in a non-dark way i don't understand what he's saying we're all crazy i'm not listening to any of it and that's kind of how as you said the globalists rule people is they create it so like human sex trafficking is someone everyone can agree on is bad or like too much plastic in the ocean like we can all agree that's bad but they create these like little demonic little idols and then no one can talk about things that we should agree on and it's also very feminine masculine it's like you know, I see the right wing a lot of times is more masculine. We're like, you know, you have the nationalism and you have like uh, low taxes and guns and all this stuff, like the stuff I relate to. And then the feminine side is like, you know, everyone needs food and everyone's equal. And as someone with four little kids, that that's great that a mom's like that. Like my wife views our four children the way a, like a leftist would view them. It's like they're all special. They all need food. They all like it's all about safety and keeping. And then the man is like. Well, the fastest gets more food, you know, and so to, together that's like a, a functioning home. And so I think a, a real slavery mechanism is to divide the masculine, the feminine, the right and the left and keep everybody so you can't like uh, solve common problems that we would all agree to. And I think that um, on the surface, this is this is one of the problems back whenever I was listening to this dude, it was I was not paying attention near, near as much as I am now. And uh, after I was. Uh, while I was watching a uh, interview of Johnny Arcade, he, him telling his story and his experience and uh, the things that were going on around that time, I like I realized that I was just a, a stone skipping across the lake. That is Owen Benjamin and the Bears and all that kind of stuff. I had no idea what was going on because it was just surface uh, surface level paying attention. And so whenever he talks the way he does right there, he makes seemingly makes a lot of sense and that's one of the problems with him that i have is because he uses nuggets of truth to lure people in and then you get the re the, the rest of the 98 percent of the toxic uh yeah 
I, I, that's why I just loved what uh, you wrote about the normalization of sodomy because it's not about like, oh, gays are bad. Oh, everybody with a perversion is bad. Lock them up, throw rocks at them. Because a lot of times they're just following along with society's pace. And so that's why what I do on my stream, I know I can come across as very aggressive, but I find it comedic. But I try to promote the good, the true, the beautiful, like farming. And He's, oh, It's so, uh, <laughs> so frustrating. The, him saying the good, the true, the beautiful is obnoxious. Horrendous. Family and like, you know, you just make fun of it versus like saying you're going to hell, I'm going to heaven. Like that type of shit doesn't work, you know? Well, after that long soliloquy, <laughs> I have many things to say to it. Um, I think number one, I find it impossible to look at what's happening on this planet without referencing that we're spirit beings, that there's something going on here beyond just, you know, cracking each other over the head because, you know, I want to cut your... So there's been things that I've wanted to say about her. And I'm trying to hold my tongue until I know more about her. And so th I'm interested in seeing what she's going to say with this. Child's penis off and you don't. You know, it's so fucking beyond that. Yeah. And so I, I try really hard to not react to things. I mean, I fail most of the time because I'm average. I only have to see by mumbling and I start going, fucking hell! <laughs> <laughs> and, um, but, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I probably shouldn't swear. Um, no, it's, this is a place for that. A free, free swearing. Yeah, okay. yeah, get, just um, say it all. Yeah, but for instance, I would say that, you know, our spiritual evolution, our passage through this universe, this eternity, you know, I hardly know where to start. It's like having a fight with someone who has been, you know, psychologically and spiritually, um, you, you say spell, and I think that's a really good, it's a bewitching. Of people. Okay, here's the situation. I'm going to pause this. I'm going to go read up on her just so that I know. I, hold on. I'll, I'll be right back. Okay, so I decided not to because there's a whole lot of his listeners that probably have no idea who she is or has never heard of her. And I don't. Yeah, I just want to experience it the way they did. And they call it psyops. And you can really bewitch people well. You can get it so that they are completely, you know, speaking in tongues and throwing themselves on the floor. You, you can do all kinds of things because we're spirit beings. And I, uh, sorry, let me just start again. No, this, so, this is beautiful. I, You're so okay. right. Okay. Well, so how is it that we can start to get into, unpack what it is to be human? And I would say from all the experience that I've had in this lifetime, because I'll let me just start there. I can remember many of my lifetimes and I know. Okay. <clears throat> Huh. Many people can. And it kind of crept up on me as I grew up. Um, and I just think that if this universe only lets you have one go around and if you screw up too fucking bad, you're obliterated, that's the dumbest universe that ever was. Because I see this as consciousness trying to grow it in a way that is extraordinary. I mean, there's no words to try. All right, so I'm going to speed this up. It's, I can't really hear her. And it's partly my fault. I'm, I got something going on with my right ear, and I can't really hear that well out of it. The, the way I'm holding my phone, the speaker's on the other side of it, so I'm going to have to remember that for the next video. I sound like an idiot. Okay, so I think that we are meant to evolve. I think we get many, 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 many chances. But I also think that whatever started this game, I mean, I think Stephen Hawkins in the Big Bang, that just makes me laugh and slap my legs. Me too. Because it's like, it's like, come on, guys. This is no different than saying, you know, the, that we're standing on, you know, turtles that are standing on pillars that are standing. You know, it's just like, no, it's too stupid. But what I do think is that we are starting to penetrate at least the different dimensions that, that, that we're actually in. Uh, for instance, you only have to study the paranormal. Is this really what Scientology is? <clears throat> I guess I've never really listened to a Scientologist speak that wasn't uh, that wasn't Tom Cruise or Miscavige. And I've watched hundreds of hours of paranormal because I've had several really outstanding paranormal experiences. And you only have to then, okay, so a person can see, talk, and communicate through electronic devices, appear before people, drain batteries, do all kinds of stuff, and yet they don't have a body. They don't have a mouth, they don't have eyes, and yet, you know. So there's so many questions right there. And people kind of, I'm always astonished when people say, well, that's a little far-fetched, isn't it? And I'm like, we're, you know, a rock swimming through eternity, and there's nothing extraordinary that I could possibly dream of that would be more extraordinary than what, what's actually happening. 
and this kind of dim, un unimaginative viewpoint that we're just sort of these, you know, blobs of meat pushing around and everything's in this brain, you know, again, how is a paranormal, you know, how are you supposed to get an electronic voice phenomena from a being that doesn't have a brain? Right. So, you know, also, and like Eckhart Tolle, I loved him when he, in the power of now, said, I have no idea what she's talking about, really. I mean, I heard what she said. She's talking about like the paranormal and all that kind of stuff. And how are you supposed to get voices like EPA or whatever that is, the white noise? You are the witness of your thoughts. And thereby, you, the spirit being, are listening to your mind. And we all know from Buddhism and all these different religions where the, you, you try to quiet the mind. What is the mind? And why do you identify with it? Why does it torture you? Why does it gabble at you all day long? You know, what is okay, that? Okay, now she's starting to sound like a Scientologist. And who's listening? And when you have near-death experiences, I know you're trying to say something. Shall I shut up for a second? No, I love it. I was just going to say, oh. have you ever seen the movie uh, Revolver? Uh, remind me, who's in it? It's uh, Jason Statham's in it. It's directed by Guy Ritchie. Uh, you'd love it. You'd love it. Yeah. It's, oh, my God. It's just like what you're talking about. The whole question is, Andre 3000's in it, is if you're the devil, where would you hide? It'd be like the closest to the the closest to you as possible, which is many times it's, it's your own. Yeah, it's like your own. Like one of my best friends is a former Navy SEAL who's now in Africa doing a boga and all this stuff. And his whole thing was realizing that his mind wasn't him, where there was this voice that kept being like, fat, you know, and he's like experienced extreme war conditions and all this. And it's just like this, this, this thing that was on his back, just being like, you're not good enough. Everyone hates you. Go faster, harder. Blah, blah, blah. And then he started realizing, like, that's not me. Like, I'm witnessing that. And that is something very interesting that I've gathered from, you know, more Eastern thought. And that's what you're talking about right now. Like, I don't have memories of past lives or anything, but I have experienced sync. Yet. <laughs> who's, got, who's got money on it that in the next couple of weeks he's going to be like, I was this in a past life. Very good post. I wouldn't put it past him. He's been psychic and uh, he can move stuff with his mind. He can heal people. And <laughs> there's so many things that he's done. So I would not put it past him. Synchronicities that have blown my mind to a degree where I'm like, something else is happening. Same as an artist, too. It's like I've created art where people have called me a CIA shell because I'm like, it all happened. And I'm like, no, I just can't. Like, I just thought it up. You know, like you could just. like. I What's he talking about? He created art where everybody called him a CIA shill. Is he talking about his comedy or is he talking about actual art? Because I'm unaware of any kind of actual art. I don't know. All right. So this is the Texas Goat Radio Show. I don't know if this is going to be as interesting as I thought it was going to be. Um, <laughs> but uh, as always, till next time.